Welcome back to our show, What Do You Think? I'm your host, Afifa Omer, and I'm joined by your co-host, Rataba Khan. Our topic for today is an interesting one as it's an important topic that I think it would be related uh, it would be re- relatable for everyone. Today we will be discussing stress management and anxiety um, because people have been home and they're unable to go out and cope with stress the way that they normally would in their day-to-day lives. We are going to discuss this topic and we're going to shed some light on it. Today, we will be joined by our guest, Mehroz Azam, who is a 22-year-old studying psychology and is a well-accomplished scholar of personal development in both academics and athletics, who inspires future leaders to increase their integrity towards a conscious mindset. Mehroz uses his voice to curate bodies and minds of his mind and now offers a program in self-mastery for those seeking direction in their lives. Meroz, I'd like to come towards you and ask you if you could just um, tell us some of the things that may have affected people's stress level and anxiety during this lockdown. Yeah, first of all, thank you guys very much for having me on the show. I wanted to thank you for even being here to listen to me, and um, I hope that I can share some value with everybody today. But to answer your question, I mean, there could be a series of different stresses that many people have during this time. I mean, the pandemic came like uninvited it came out of nowhere and some people might have been working some people might have been in school on track towards the degree some people might have been in high school trying to figure out what they want to do in life um there were so many things and so many different people experiencing different circumstances but one thing is for sure that it kind of shook everybody's mindset or way of living in a similar manner right we all had to go do social distancing we couldn't meet each other as much uh we were afraid of catching a virus and Um, all those little things kind of get some people really stressed. And at the same time, when you think about your life in your future and you're trying to plan something, right? Because I'll tell you for myself, in my personal experience, I was planning, I had a goal. I said, hey, this is what I want to accomplish by June. And uh, once March came along and I was, I was kind of turned off that cycle, it was, it was like, I can't go for that specific goal anymore because it required contact with people. And Mm -hmm. so now I'm thinking, what do I have to, what do I want to do in life? What do I want to do overall? And I think those are the major factors that might've started where there's an uncertainty of the future, where in your own mind, you have something that is keeping you in the path that you're on, right? Um, Your day to day, your, your family, the way your relationships are, they're fairly consistent on a day-to-day basis, obviously scale it long-term, there's, there's significant change. But in those moments, you try to expect what you're gonna feel or what you're gonna do or what you're gonna have in the next few months or few weeks. And all of a sudden that's gone. So really what it kind of came down to, and this is how I was able to interpret it and how I was able to adjust and accommodate to it, it was that I realized, yes, I was setting goals and I was on on my path towards something. Mm-hmm. And um, at that moment, once it was kind of sh- taken away, I had to really contemplate another goal or something else because that's the best thing to do, first of all, if you're in that position, is to think about something else, another ideal, another um, idea that you want to live your life by or or see and vision yourself as. And if you don't have it yet, and that's okay, like it takes time uh, to develop. But I really started to do the stuff I enjoy because when you look at the overall circumstance, people do have stress and they have fear. Stress, I, I normally term as the inability to adapt to changes, right? It could be different in, um, in, in some other references, but that's how I see it. And now that change is inevitable, we already know that, okay, that the change is coming, but start doing the things that you're intrinsically guided to do. Like I might, you know, video games might have come out, some other things might have come out, and I found joy in that, I found peace in that. Some people might find peace in other things, uh, bike riding or being at home doing indoor workouts or chatting with family. I'll tell you like many people were working on the day-to-day job and it's like, you don't get to see your family as much during the work life here in Canada at least. Um, work so much and so now you can see you start to add benefits to the situation because right when something happens and you hear the media and you hear everything else you only hear the negatives and influences your mind you don't see it in a balanced way and that causes more stress so you some like I was lucky enough that I got part of a 
of a program of a live webinar uh, of a doctor and he's uh, actually a behavior psychologist and he said that when you look at any circumstance you know it's up to you how you see it and you're not seeing it as it is you're seeing it based on how you think it is right mm -hmm. and when you have too many negatives on a circumstance it runs your mind and you you don't have the clarity you would if you were able to balance out the negatives with the positives even still with positives too like if you are highly infatuated with something you're not balanced like people might remember times in their life where they're very fat infatuated with an idea um a significant other and it it doesn't have you balance in your approach to 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 getting what you want and and so yeah writing down seeing the pauses i saw that yeah my family time was definitely increasing my connection with my brothers grew stronger um with my family members we weren't talking as much obviously in person but we were on live calls um stuff like even these the this virtual uh chat we're in like mm -hmm. these stuff kind of came about and hence I'm also doing this video to be able to talk about it that's another positive and so we could go on and on and now when you do that what happens is your emotion of your your you, the way you feel is better and normally what people would say is like yeah your feelings supersede your thoughts so if I'm caught up in a negative emotion guilt resentment fear worry if I'm caught up in those negative emotions it's going to run me and my thoughts are going to be in line with those emotions. Mm -hmm. And what people don't realize is you right now, the way we are sitting right here, we are the thoughts, the accumulation of thoughts we were thinking about three weeks ago or four weeks ago, right now. That's why we're feeling the things we're feeling right now. So obviously if you're feeling that way right now and you try to think positively or you try to get out of that way of thinking, saying instead of, having uh disempowering thoughts like uh like you know i can't do this i'm not able to do this i should not and you're having disempowering thoughts then and, and you start to try to implement like i am this is possible i can do it um and you're starting to have it in the first week yeah you might feel like you're you're fooling yourself but you commit to it two weeks to three weeks and you'll see now what you become three four weeks from now is because of what you've been thinking about for this period of time and that allows you to change the emotion alter it in a way where you can attract the thoughts you need to <laughs> clear clearly and have less stress um and one other thing i would highly recommend um it's something that a lot of my mentors have taught me and a lot of people who are successful they will teach kind of like a morning routine right people will say hey what do you do in the morning mm -hmm. um and, and how do you start your day and like for, for me personally, like, you know, I'm Muslim, so praying in the morning is something that I like, I, I do. And even if you're not Muslim, it's kind of like the, the feeling of that you're not alone, you know, that, that, um, that there's a force in this world that's here to guide you and that you can trust in it to guide you through your day. And so having that mindset, and then what I would do is I would sit down and I'd write a few things that I'm grateful for. Um, and, and it even works with things that I don't have yet that I know in the future I'll be grateful for, but I, I act as if I already have it. So I start writing like, I'm so happy and grateful now that, you know, um, my body is, I have like, you know, a 10% body fat and even though I'm not right now but I'll start writing those things mm -hmm. and I'll start writing other things that I'm grateful about. And what it's doing is writing causes you to think, and we think in pictures. Now, when we're thinking about ourselves in the picture of success and the picture of the way we want to see ourselves, it inf impacts our feelings and it puts us in the emotion of gratitude, thankfulness. And um, a mentor taught me this. He said the gra that gratitude is um, basically the, the, the feeling, the emotion that that balances your mind, you know, if you if you if you're in gratitude. And um, so he said it's a single act of mental atonement. That's what he said. So that's why that activity in the morning really gets you feeling good. And then you get your day started. And no matter what happens, whether things happened yesterday, things happened later on today, because you started your day off with that, you're more likely to have a better day, you know. Okay. Thank you so much for that introduction. It was really helpful. And I feel like I learned a lot myself. 
Um, so I wanted to ask you, do you know how people have like their everyday routine from their nine to five jobs and they find structure within that nine to five? So how can people maintain that at, during lockdown? Because we can't go out, we can't see friends. So how do we keep our mental state like at that same structure? OK, so are you saying that the person would still be working nine to five or because they were coming from a nine to five now that yeah, they like, don't have that? For example, I, like if I had uni and I'm like used to waking up at 9 a.m., going to uni, going to the library, but now I can't go to the library, I can't leave the house and I'm like surrounded by family. And so I can't get that like alone time. How do I maintain like my um, everyday structure? OK, great, great, great question. So now uh, what I would say is it kind of Think about those stuff that you feel like you're missing out on. So you would mention like, you know, studying, going to library school. So how can you do study and work on uh, your degree and do another thing at home, first of all? Like mm -hmm. those similar aspects. So if it was work and you were helping people with mindset, for example, you're doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or um, you were an athletic therapist or anything in fitness. So you were somebody who's physically there. Now, when you come home, how those same aspects of your job that you're not able to do anymore how can you still serve provide a service in that area or do something in that similar area where you can kind of find a way to do it at home like i'll give you an example uh, my friend he is an athletic therapist his name is jose and he instead of like obviously he wasn't with he was working with clients one-on-one -on -one. but now mm -hmm. it was he created an instagram page and then he started posting a lot of how-to videos that he had learned and he kind of started to landmark his own fitness journey of his own body's progress so that other people who are at home, they can learn from his movements, they can start to do exercise. And he's still doing the things he would be doing at work. He's not getting paid by his job, but he's getting paid by the government. So it's kind of like you find the interwining, like the stuff that like you, you, you kind of want um, that you are doing and you kind of find new ways to adapt. Um, another example, because there is this one guy in the US and he owns a gym. So obviously now that the quarantine had come about, you know, he would be losing a lot of money. He has a lot of equipment. He has a place that he's paying for, but nobody's coming in. So he came up with this idea. He just hit up all of his trainers, all of his clients and said, if anybody's looking for home equipment, I'm gonna rent you out the home equipment so you can take it into your house and uh, you'll pay me on a month to month basis until this is over and then you can give it back. And that allowed him to get so many people to borrow his equipment. He's able to make the money that he needed to make uh, to balance himself out. And so he's still serving a purpose, serving a need and doing work, but he's still adapting. Now, obviously it's not gonna be exact and it's different because in your mind, you like I had a calendar back in my on my wall and I would write, this is the day I'd work, this is the time I'd work, this is the time I go to school, this is the time. And all of a sudden you don't have that. You have kind of like an open space up to you to decide. And rather than feeling like you're missing out on it, you could feel like you're actually now able to uh, adjust in any way you want. Like obviously taking away from the aspect of being able to be around a lot of people, mm -hmm. but in terms of the time that you have, you're technically supposed to be in more control of your time. So now it's like, okay, between each time, what are some actions I could be doing that keep me um, to going towards this, this, this goal? So when you think about work, the goal that it serves is that one, you get income, right? And two, you get what, what, what someone would call mental income. So it's like the fulfillment from your work, right? So you do it for those two reasons. For school, you're doing that for your education, for your degree. Um, for the gym, the reason why you would be working out for three hours a day is because you want to get fit. So now when we look at the overall goals, make money, fulfillment, study, degree, and body fitness, how can I still set goals where I can still progress towards those areas, make, have money come in, have fulfillment come in, have my body, have my studies, but being at home. And, and you'll find that there's so many ways to make that happen um, from the comfort of your home. It's mm -hmm. just in a different way that you might not have been used to. Mm -hmm. um, first, I have a follow-up question according to what you said the first time. So you were talking about how, you know, you should just be thinking positive and in, two, in three, four weeks, you are right there where you start, right? But the thing is when you do start writing these things down or when you start thinking in a certain way, a lot of times midway you give up. It's not 
you know, sometimes like something negative or you just see something, you hear about something, you just give up. You're like, you know what, this this isn't going to happen. I'm just being, you know, I'm being infatuated, as you said. I'm just being delusional. This isn't going to happen. How do yeah. you do that? How do you keep going when something keeps happening? Right. So this is, uh, it comes down to a place of awareness of yourself, of, of knowing you. And obviously the first thing is to do is, is, is to study, to study about yourself like what do i enjoy what am i how like i study the mind and that's brought me a lot of clarity in my life so mm -hmm. now when it comes to um your your question of when you're actually starting something it takes energy to start it it's true it does take energy and effort and the more energy that you put in the more likely it is to settle but think about this when you're driving your car when you're first learning how to drive the car and your first two weeks, it was it was tough. Like you're stuttering, your mom's yelling at you in the seat. You're trying to drive, pay attention, and you're 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 having this feel of like a little bit of anxiety. You don't want to go near cars, and you feel all that. And then you do that for two weeks. Yes, you had to put some effort into bypassing that part, just mm -hmm. getting by. But then knowing how the mind works, that after a while of doing this activity it's going to be more subconsciously operated where I don't even have to think about it and I'm going to do it. Like now I go to Tim Hortons, I go to anywhere I need to go. And as I'm driving, I'm not thinking about, you know, how do I turn the steering wheel? Is there a car beside me? I become very used to it. It's become a part of my lifestyle. And so knowing that whatever I'm doing and putting effort into right now, I only have to do it because I want to do it. And as I do it, I might not have to think about doing it anymore because my subconscious will will take over that behavior become easier um, and I, I'll do it more like brushing my teeth you know so yeah. it's kind of like just commit to it I might not believe at the start it works right but I don't know if it works or not if I don't apply it so it's kind of like I have to entertain the idea it's it, it had to kick it around a little bit in my mind is this for example I did say write down a gratitude journal but in your mind, you might do it for three, four days and feel like it's not working or it's not it's not there yet. So I would say if you don't if, if you don't believe it, then you're setting yourself up to stop doing it. But if you borrow my belief or if you borrow someone else's belief in you that, yes, if you do this, you will see that type of feeling and you commit to it. Uh, sometimes that's why people need accountability partners. They need to tell their friend that, hey, listen, I thought about this idea. I, I feel like it's going to impact my life in a positive way. I want you to help me keep accountable to doing this so that I can I can persevere. And and normally you want to do it with somebody maybe that you you value, that you trust, um, or maybe that that you respect because uh, you wouldn't want to lose that person's respect. And then in that place, in that place, you're more likely to be adamant about it and push. Um, but just knowing that it gets easier normally pushes me to go forward and that at the start, I know that I have to put the work in and thinking about my life. It's the way I was is always pulling me back the way we, well, as we're thinking about doing something different, like the current circumstances we have in life are always trying to keep us where we are because it's meant to keep us comfortable. It's meant to keep us surviving and it doesn't like that much change, right? So that's why um, you know people have to actually push for that change to happen. And as you start walking that path, you'll start feeling resistance from the, the, the way you were a week ago, where normally at that time you would play video games. But now instead of playing video games, you're trying to <clears throat> you're trying to do this gratitude journal. Yeah. And because of that, it's um like it's it's like, like tr the trigger. So in my room, if every day at 9 a.m. I'm playing video games, imagine not doing that for a week your mind actually feels the need at 9 a.m. You'll notice that, hey, I wanna be playing video games. When you're not, when you're trying not to, mm -hmm. it comes up um, because your body's still used to it. And so um, that's why you feel the way you feel, um, that you feel like you want to stop because those same feelings are coming back in and those same routines, patterns are coming back in, but you have to push and persevere knowing that it's gonna change and alter a result in your life. Um, that's the biggest thing. So um, as like a follow up from what you've said, we've seen a lot on social media of people saying, oh, this is the best time for you to start a business or this is the best time for you to work on yourself. But like, how do I, like, how do people deal with that pressure, like expectation, like you have to come out as a better person at like this lockdown or you must start something? Mm -hmm. That's an amazing question. I'm so glad you asked that because I 
fell into that as well. Uh, first few weeks, because I'm a guy, like as soon as I'm off one thing, I want to be working towards something. Like mm-hmm. I need to find the next best thing. And then people were putting up programs, online studies. I see all these ads and I'm already into personal development, but then I started feeling like maybe I need to start a business, which I actually did. I actually started to work on something and I started to adapt in different ways. But at the time when I started to feel stressed at the beginning, I noticed it was because I was rushing. I noticed it was because the first month of the quarantine, when it came about, it was almost like a blessing. Like I was like, wow, like, how much has life changed? And I started to really do the things I enjoyed. But then I started to put myself into the busy character again, because mm-hmm. in the past I was a busy character. And so mm-hmm. I said, like, I'm not busy. I feel like something's wrong. So I started jumping into things again. And because I was doing that, I feel like it kind of took me away from the clarity I was looking for. So this is what I, this is actually something I engraved on, on this necklace. And it was exactly what got me through that time. And it was that direction is more important than speed. So mm-hmm. when things feel really rushed and that you're, you're feeling like you need to make all these changes and that you need to start a business and you need to do all those things, if I don't know the direction in which I'm going, it doesn't matter how fast I go towards it. And so if I really am certain that this is the right direction, then you won't feel like you are um, stressed because you've, you, you have an inner knowing that this is exactly where you need to be, what you need to do, and you're feeling comfort in the idea, and it's drawing you, it's, it's seeking you. And so so you when when you are clear in your own life and, you, and you've got in a second, you have to first of all take, take some time off to not do anything, uh, clear your mind. Lately now, obviously, we're able to sort of go out, so I've been riding my bike outdoors in the morning, I've been reading, I've been listening to audio tapes, um, I've been having a lot of quiet time. And mm-hmm. after I had all that quiet time, I was able to finally understand, okay, what are the moves I need to make? And they were big decisions. Like I actually did leave my job during the time that I was working for for two and a half years. And I decided to go on and do my own business. And I started to work on this idea. And as I walked that path, other things started opening up, doors started opening up for me. And I knew it was the right way. So because that was, kind of where it was moving me towards out of me thinking in the clarity the space of clarity because i was in the space of clarity and I, I felt it and i said well this is what i need to do so like you might have all these social expectations right from your <laughs> from social media from the government from everybody and they have expectations of who you should be but you should really get to a point where you're like who am I and who do I want to be and who do I think I am? Because that's the, that's the most important thing. And now start realizing, well, all the thoughts that you were in your head that got, you got to get a degree or you should be an engineer or you should be a therapist or you should be a trainer. Who are the people that put that in my mind? Like who are the people that were, were trying to get me on that path? And then if it was up to me, is that really what I want to do? If it were up to me, is that really what's guiding me? Um, and I started looking at, okay, what's the thing I put the most energy into? What's the thing I enjoy doing the most? I don't need somebody to remind me to do it. Like people, like I do it naturally. What is the thing that I enjoy investing my time into? And I realized, well, yes, it was personal development. It was speaking. It was, it was helping other people with mindset. And there were so many similarities. And I'm like, okay, so that's what I'd like to do a lot. You know, what I put my time, energy, money, and, uh, and commitment into, you know, and what do I do with that I'm naturally inspired to do. Um, so don't think like, if I don't like cleaning, like I'm, that's, I know that's the thing that I'm not inspired to do. But if you tell like, for example, my brothers or somebody, hey man, let's play this game. Like right away, he's gonna play that. He's gonna play for six hours. He has the most focus. He has the most attention in the thing he's highly inspired to do. And in the stuff that you are least inspired to do, you have the least amount of focus, you're not attentive. Um, and in those areas, now you might get into a predicament where you're like, okay, then like, how do I get over that? So for example, now, and I'm kind of taking a detour here, but if you're, if you're um, for me, it was like, yes, personal development, speaking, and helping others with mindset, right? So if I have to do the chores, like clean my room or do anything, I know that's something that's low, but now I have to question, how am I going to, uh, how is this activity that's lower on my value list going to impact me in my highest value? How is it going to help me there? Yeah. I have to 
working that directly. So I'm like, if I clean my space, clean my room, do all this, then it's going to give me an open space to be able to communicate my information effectively. I'll be able to study in a very clear and, and, and quiet and, and clean environment. Um, you know, I'm going to be able to uh, possibly, what if somebody comes to my house and they need help with mindset and, and I didn't have this all clean, then it's going to hinder my conversation with this person. So then I start thinking in that way. And that's where now you'll be inspired to do the thing that you're actually not inspired to do just for the reason to do the other things that you're inspired to do. Um, thank you so much, Mary Rose. I have another follow up question from what you just said. So you know how you mentioned that you become focused on the things that you're inspired to do. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, I've, I've, ha I've been having conversations with like people around me, with my friends, and I found out like I know that a lot of people who are there in my course, I know there are a lot of them who enjoy it, and I know a lot of them are just there just, you know, for the sake of a degree. But mm -hmm. people who enjoy it have found themselves lacking in terms of like work, or they have found themselves like not being as productive as they were in day to day lives uh, than compared to when in quarantine, right? Even though you're studying the same material, it's different because you're remote studying it but they're not as motivated so when they mm -hmm. are inspired to do that thing why is it that when we are sitting behind our screens we're not able to do it as effectively as we were okay great question um think about the word desire right and and it really it's kind of like the idea that you have a power from within um and desire match with your inspiration when you're inspired you're, you see your desire but when I was doing the thing that I was not as inspired to do and attaching it to something I am, I was really reenacting why I'm doing it. So when I'm not clear with why I'm doing something, then it doesn't, whether or not it would actually be something that benefits me or that I'm inspired to do or whether or not it's something I'm not, but if I don't know why I'm doing it, then I become less, I, I become resistant from that area. Like I, I take a step back. So there's this book by Simon Sinek, and I would recommend that person to read that book because it says it starts, it's the, the name is Starts With Why, right? And everything starts with that. And when you think about why you're in school, what you're doing right now in your life, and, and you're saying, okay, why is it that I'm doing this? And then start to see what are the things about this area, like your degree or your work, um, how it brings you that fulfillment. Is this something you truly want? And sometimes people will say, well, hey, you know what? I'm doing this because to be honest, it's just to make someone else happy. Um, it's not really for myself. And that's when most people get to that point where they're gonna procrastinate so much. Um, it's not just because they, they, like, they're trying to avoid it, but it's like, they're not coming to a decision. So the thing that ends procrastination is a decision. It's like, I'm doing this and it's certain, right? And, and when, I had a three-day cleanse last week, right? And it actually took me a, 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 like I was eating good and healthy foods for three days, but I was procrastinating on it prior. Like I missed out on one weekend. And I was saying, well, the thing was, um, I was I was kind of in the place where I, with, with the, the foods I was eating, I was enjoying it, I got used to it. And now when it came down to doing this thing, which I'm normally, like I normally eat really good. I had a physique for last year. And so I, I was like, nah, um, I was procrastinating. I wasn't, I wasn't making the decision. But then I hit up one person. I said, hey, listen, I'm gonna follow exactly what you say for three days. And you're an expert in, in, um, in nutrition. So you're gonna help me out for three days. And I'm 100% committed to do anything I need to do for those three days. I'll go get the grocery list, I'll make the videos, I'll eat. And I made a decision in my mind, I made a committed decision that this Friday I'm gonna do that. And that's when I overcame that procrastination. Mm -hmm. And I would only make that decision, first of all, if you noticed, if I knew why I was going to do it. Well, I'm like, I need to really get my stuff in check. And you might be in a place of dissatisfaction. But what I find that most people have fault in is that they think dissatisfaction is a very bad thing. They think that because I'm frustrated, because I'm annoyed about this thing in my life and I'm dissatisfied, it sucks. But really, dissatisfaction is a creative state. You know, we wouldn't have the light bulbs, we wouldn't have the cars, we wouldn't have uh, certain electronics if somebody wasn't dissatisfied with the way things were, right? And and it, it, that's the creative state that brings out change. So if you're dissatisfied and you're procrastinating, then 
you, that's a place where you need to be creative of how you're going to adapt and how you're going to change the circumstance in your life. Because you got to understand that you you walk and create your own environment, right? People, people, and this is what a mentor said to me. He said, Morales, you got to be the director of your own movie. You sit down in your own movie and you're basically watching other people play a big role in your movie and you're not you're not acting as if you're the star. You know, mm -hmm. you're sitting back waiting for a circumstance, waiting for an opportunity, waiting for somebody to say, hi, let me grab your hand. And, and then you're going to do what you need to do. But if you don't realize this, you're actually sitting in the seat right now that is your own. You're in your own throne. You are the star of your movie and you have the choice to direct the life that you want to live. So when, when, I, when, I, when, he, when I heard that, it took me away from what everybody else was telling me about myself, like what I should be, could be. And I started to think, what do I really want? And I was in that space for a week and a half, two weeks. And that's where I started to connect to my why. And and at that point, I realized, well, I don't want to work at my corporate job anymore. Um, I, I realized, well, I don't want to work in this uh, on this idea anymore. And crazy enough, I was, for two years, I was thinking that that is my life. I was thinking that that is the truth. All of a sudden, the quarantine and coronavirus comes about, and I'm shaken up, and I decide for myself that that's not the way I want to go anymore. And when I made the decision, first of all, two years ago, with the level of awareness I had, it was probably the right decision to do. Now, coming to this point two years later with the awareness I have about myself, and I was to ask my, the same question, is this what I want? And it, it might be different. doesn't mean it was right or wrong back then. I don't need to regret it. I don't need to say, hey, this is a bad thing or a good thing. But what I do need to do is come to this point and say, hey, I've grown. I have a different, I have my conscious evolution has, my conscious mindset has evolved. And now I'm able to make a new decision. So I said, well, okay, I'm not going to go back to work. And I only got to feel that or notice that because, again, that quote comes back into my mind, direction is more important than speed. So I need to figure out the direction I'm heading in. And um, when it comes to procrastination, it's still about the emotions. It's still that the emotions carry you into that place because what you're doing is you're ignorant of the idea that is going to help you change the circumstance because all it takes is an idea. It's an idea that comes to you um, and, and you act on the idea and then you change the circumstances you have in life or the results. So if you're procrastinating, you're just currently – ignorant or ignoring you could be ignoring the fact that you know it but you're not giving time some people are actually afraid to look in believe it or not some people are actually afraid to sit down and really question themselves about what they're doing and so you're ignoring yourself you're you're trying to and you might notice that your activity in life you're doing a lot of behavior that is very impulsive um it's actually a representation of you're not living in your highest values yeah. Um, being so impulsive and reacting all the time. So you're you're consciously, you're worrying and you're doubting things, right? Consciously. Because you do that for days on days, you turn into the emotion. The subconscious mind is your emotional mind. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have fear now. Fear comes about. And fear has its way of interwining and weaving through your behavior. Like certain behaviors that you're doing, you're only doing because you're afraid of something. You know, when you're when you're young and you're, you touch the stove and you said it was hot and you move your hand right away, you don't want to touch the stove again. If you got burned once, you don't want to be burned twice. So if you had a bad situ bad uh, experience doing something before um, and you're trying to do that type of thing again, oh, man, last time I quit my job, I really didn't. Yeah. It made a big difference, you know, or last time that I, I, I went on a diet, I, I fell off, you know, or last time I did this, you're looking and the decision that you're trying to make right now, you're actually basing off of a previous experience that was negative. And now that same, because you think it was a negative experience, you're creating the same sense of fear when you worry and doubt about the same topic. So I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but no. you know how you how you said that you when you have bad, bad experience, you just keep thinking about it consciously. But mm -hmm. the thing is, sometimes and a lot of times, people have a bad experience not once, but maybe like two, three times. For example, I'm just giving an example over here. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine had bad experiences with a certain group of people. And ever since then, he does not want to get close to them. Not because he thinks they're bad people, but just because of his own personal experience, right? Yeah. How do you remember something like that? When you keep going and bumping into it, then you just, a lot of times people are like, you know what? 
Afifa, this is a sign from the universe that I should stop. Do you know what I mean? How do you get over something like that? How do you step out of your comfort zone into that zone when you know that that's kind of like a danger zone for you? Yeah, um, I was like that too. And I still am in some ways. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be feeling that way in, in situations where you're where you're evolving because understand that that's the place of, of growth because you're faced with challenges and only with a certain amount of challenges, you're gonna find ways to adapt and grow as a person, as a human being. Um, so your question itself, it was, um, could you repeat the exact question? Yeah. You okay, so you know when you keep having bad experiences with something right, okay. over and over again more than once, how do you step out of that zone into you know, going into that danger zone again. Right. So this is kind of like, think about it like this. Okay. Um, I don't know. This idea just came into my mind and uh, you're walking down and there's like a crack in the road and, and basically your dollar fell there. And then you're basically, you, when you, when, when it fell before you put your hand in that crack and you know, it couldn't, you couldn't get it. Or maybe it basically there was something in there and it scared you or whatever. You couldn't, you just got scared of it. I know this is a different, it's a random analogy that I'm thinking about, but think about that as a circumstance point of view. Now I had a bad experience with this. I didn't get what I wanted out of it. And, and that was, that was the problem. So this could be like the situation where there's two different people. The first person is going there. He dropped the dollar, but he doesn't really want the dollar. He doesn't think the dollar is worth the risk of putting his hand down that place and getting it. Yeah. And he actually doesn't really care for the dollar as much you know so even though it happened it might have been a bad experience but he doesn't necessarily want to or need to do that again now the other person the dollar falls down and his little daughter is saying dad i need that dollar i need that dollar i need to get that ice cream and for him he doesn't want to do it it's the same situation but a different guy who's tried to done it before and he didn't enjoy doing it now he's forced to because his daughter really needs it it's yeah. so not serving a purpose and he has this okay shoot now i really need to try and even though he doesn't want to he's being pushed into a situation where he has to in that moment it's like okay what do i really want i do need to do this if you establish that you need to do this then don't let fear hold you back because what you're what's holding you back is fear is mm -hmm. the fear that something in the future is going to be detrimental to you and think about it like this um this is the best way to put it because in that moment you can either have fear or faith, right? Your, your subconscious mind in that moment, you're either going to fill it with fear or faith. Don't a lot of people have both of them a lot of times? You can't have them both at one, but you do have both in different situations. Okay. But the thing is both of them require you to believe in something you can't see. Both so like them. what for now for, like we have the fear of the unknown of like what's going to happen like for example yeah. the coronavirus we yeah. don't know what's going to happen but we have faith in our government that they're doing what's best for us but like in the uk the death toll is so high mm -hmm. so should i be like trusting them and i have fear in trusting my government now right and now in that situation you as a person depends what level of um control you have on the situation and if you do fear that and you're able to based on that develop the desire to want to again you're in a dissatisfaction dissatisfaction state of dissatisfaction you want to change you start a movement online or you start something and you start to implement that then if you feel that drive that you want to do that then you should um although i don't i will in that moment not just trust in the government i'm just going to try to trust in the higher power i'm going to try beyond that because that's where i get my faith from you mm -hmm. know i i might not get my faith from a person from a from an entity but i can get my faith in god or the universe as i see it so that's where i'm going to put my mind and i'm going to understand that even though i might not see the the benefits from the coronavirus right now because through all of the stuff and catastrophes that have happened on this planet mm -hmm. we've always seen that over time there were good things that came out of the fact that that had happened. New laws, new regimes, new society, people building up from, from nothing to something and uh, revolution, uh, basically like the technology, the, the industries we have, so many things bloom from situations that were actually chaotic. And so 
I might, I will understand that I might not know right now where the good is in this, but that it will soon reveal itself. And I believe that God will have his way. Nature will have his way of bringing that balance through time. Because I know as people, we want to use our perception and put our own subjective ideas to an, to, to a circumstance and deem it as right or wrong or bad or good. And it, reality is those events end up having both sides. Um, some people will look at it as a good thing. Some people look at it as a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can say, well, hey, you know what? Um, a lot of, uh, you know, so many people are going to be born <laughs> in six months from now or a few months from now because people are all at home and as families, I'm not going to get into details. But what I'm saying is that in those moments now, you're going to have more higher birth rates later on. And that could be seen as a good thing, you know, and that's how I would see that situation. But when I was talking about the idea of fear and faith, that's still kind of connect, right? You want to either put your mind in the space of fear, not only thinking about what it's doing to the world, but what it's doing to yourself. Because if you're operating from a place of fear, the government is not going to come help you. You're saying that the government is the bad, the, the entity that needs to change. Yeah. But you feel the sense of fear you're feeling the sense of things and how that's imp impacting your day-to-day -day. like i know oh this is the best example i know my grandfather um he sits down watching GOTV in the pakistan news and he is always always mad always frustrated he's seeing the decisions they're making and he's being like oh my god like are you serious are you doing this and he will yell and he will be frustrated and he will oh well, you put food in front of him and he'll push the food away from you and he'll be like like he leaves that serious about the changes the government might be making in the country. But the government isn't gonna come help you, shake you out of the feeling that you're in. You are now looking at the small little things that are happening in your day. You are actually behaving based on that sense of fear and annoyance. You are, the situations that are happening in your day are becoming, they're, they're not great desirable situations. Um, and it's only because you're carrying that feeling within you. Mm -hmm. So. Um, thinking about how it's impacting your own um, your own life, the way you're, you the way other people are reacting and responding to you, and so that's why yes, I would in in that moment, although fear is a it's it's a reasonable and a logical thing to do, I would still want to put my my feelings and my ideas into faith, and again, both of them require you to see something that isn't there in your own mind, and fear. You're only avoiding it because you feel like a future situation is going to bring more downsides than positives. Mm -hmm. And then faith is like there's going to be more upsides than negative. So you're always going to need both to balance yourself. You can't just, you know, you need to, you're going to have both. And it's a good thing too. And it comes to the idea of stress. This whole topic is all about stress, right? And and when we think about stress, there are such things as you stress and this stress. So you stress is actually positive stress is stress that you need in order to survive like if you're if you're you know making tea and the tea falls on the oven and uh, like it goes up and then you have to turn off the thing and wipe yeah. down the stuff and move it to the side like you need to do that if uh, you know your kid falls down trips and you need to pick him up and you know give him a bandage those type of stress factors they are meant to have us survive and thrive so you have you stress, then you also have distress. And distress could be seen as the st stress that actually inhibits your performance. You know, you uh, stress, stress that positively impacts it. So faith and, fe faith and fear, consider you stress, distress. Um, and both of them, in fact, can be used in ways. I don't want to get into the details, but yeah, fear itself, um, it again it weaves through your behavior and that's what causes like i have this this picture right here I've, i'm hoping that this is within screen right yeah. so this is your conscious mind and your subconscious mind your emotional mind and your body so right over here if you're operating from the side of ignorance and you're always consciously worrying or doubting mm -hmm. uh, and you're in that place you're going to create the emotion of fear and as fear it has to be this is what um, this is a guy named Andrew Carnegie. He was the richest man in the 1900s. And he had, there's this law. It says that any idea that you emphasize in your mind will begin to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So it just means in this Newton's law too, that any an object in motion will want to be in motion, right? And so whatever is already the energy that's going from your conscious mind to your subconscious, it has to be reflected through your body. So your body is actually showing symptom symptomatology from your conscious and subconscious mind. So those are actually the causes of why you might be feeling some ways. So now you're fear, you're in a state of fear and you're gonna have, your body is gonna reflect the feeling, yeah. the activity of anxiety. You're gonna suppress that anxiety. And if you suppress that anxiety enough, bring it down, 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 you get depressed, mm-hmm. you're in depression. And after you're in depression, you feel weak, you feel you're not, you're not tolerable and you have disease. So my mentor always said, don't say disease, dis-ease, because that's what you're in. And that's what it comes down to, dis-ease. And now you're actually in a form of disintegration. You're breaking down yourself, mm-hmm. you know? And so on the other side, if you operate with knowledge and understanding and faith, you promote well-being, you promote your expression, you promote acceleration towards where you need to go, and you're not at this ease but you're at ease um would you say the same thing would apply as you brought up the fact that your grandfather you know watches news or um whoever is watching news and they're just screaming right because they're like oh the government is making all these bad decisions the thing is during this time it is it is impossible for a human to be away from news you will be watching news, right? You will be having some form of intake, even if you're not watching it on TV, social media, Twitter, whatever it is, you are getting your news from somewhere else. Would you say that the same thing would apply when you said that you act with knowledge, um, with positivity, would that apply to such events too? Because these events are not, you know, they they impact you. Yeah. You don't want them here. Yeah, and that, that becomes a very, it's a sensitive area because serious stuff are happening. Right, yeah. and you need to know. You need to be in the know. You can't just neglect it, and that as if it's not happening. So mm-hmm. you are aware that it exists and it's happening. But the other ideas that you might have based on that, if you continuously, like when you think about the news and you think about the media, how often have they given you tips on how to better your immune system, how to have better health, um, think positively, read positive self-help books? I mean, they never mentioned that. So from the part of that you see from the news, there's a lot of negativity, unfortunately. There's a lot of negative ideas, although in cases it's real, like there's there's bombs actually yeah. that are like that are in Syria. There's actually yeah. people getting into big accidents. These aren't great, this isn't great news to hear. It makes you feel a certain type of way. And mm-hmm. so you do need to feel an empathy, you need to feel empathetic. So empathetic says, I can feel, I can understand how these people are feeling. And based on that knowledge, I'm going to, I'm going to be empathetic and I'm I'm not actually submerged in the emotion as those people, Mm -hmm. like being sympathetic, I might submerge myself and say, oh man. And then I actually start to feel as if the death had affected me. And in many ways, it was a close person in my life. And some people, like, I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do, first of all. It's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. But when you start to see that it's affecting your thoughts through the day and now you're like cooking and all you're doing is thinking about poor people around the world and it comes down to your cleaning and you're doing your work and you're like only thinking about those those things. Yet you don't have anything that you're adding on to the situation where you're able to implement change, but you're feeling those those feelings. So it's kind of like knowing that we our our minds if you've always been listening to the news and you accept everything they say you're more likely even though you're not trying to you're going to walk by the news and you're going to accept what they're saying and as you accept what they're saying you're going to see it as they see it Mm -hmm. and that's going to cause some feelings within you that might be not not something that you would actually choose to want to feel if you had the choice to but then if you saw the news and you know, you understand, you're aware of what's going on. 
I, I, I'm seeing it. I, I'm not neglecting it. I'm going to use this knowledge to take my precautions. I'm going to make sure I wear my face mask. I'm going to make sure when I go out, I'm clothed well. I'm not showing too much areas of my skin. And I'm going to make sure that I'm doing all these things and I'm taking my precautions. Now, I'm using it in a resourceful way. I'm using it in a stressful way. And you might say it creates you stressed. And it's making things um, better for me because now I know how to operate in my environment better. Right? And, but then in other ways, it can be very detrimental and take you away from that. So me, I walk by, I, be, I become aware of what's going on. I might share a few things if I really believe in it, if I, I want to share it on my pages and I want to talk about it. But then after that, like, I don't continue listening to it and, and say, give me more, you know, I, I, I'm aware in my own mind, I try to come at peace within myself. I try to say, well, God help these people. Yeah. yeah things going on you know i'm i'm hoping that their families can be better that they can they can get some help and sometimes it brings me it brings me some feeling of an expectation i see something like that and i'm like i hope it's going to come out of this i always do that and so like you know the whole um black lives matter movement you know when it did when it did start obviously it was off of a catastrophe it was off yeah. of a crazy event but now when you think about all the things that happened and good things that happened, all the celebrities who donated to the cause, who brought it up to millions of dollars of funding for certain situ for certain movements. Yeah. Uh, wow, like great. Like those good things came out of this. So I have a knowing that there's a balance in the world and that um, you know, with time, even if I don't see it right now, uh, good can come out of this. And if there's any way I can add to the good that can come out of it. Then I should, and mm -hmm. I, I all right. That's funny, but yeah. All right. Thank you so much, my Rose. Um, one last question, just before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you if you could briefly tell us um, and share some of the things that we could do, that a person could do to help their family member or friend who's suffering with anxiety or managing stress, and you know how how can you help them? Okay, so. We all do have a nature to want to help and um, say that, you know, you need assistance. The thing is, the person has to come to that idea himself, mm -hmm. right? It's the person himself that is going to be able to implement the change. You can't change that person necessarily. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is provide suggestions. You can provide ideas around them that can assist them as kind of like a ladder. Like you're throwing things and if they choose to climb that ladder, they will climb it and at, at their own pace and when they want. But you're giving them positive suggestions and ideas. Um, the best thing sometimes you can do is be good on your end about those things. And if you're good with it, they might end up coming to you and asking you for advice. Like if in the area that they're, they're that's causing the most anxiety, stress, and, and if you yourself, like a FIFA, you've been there before, that that person has been suffering from, then you have actually useful information that can say, hey, listen, I've been where you've been. I've felt what you felt. Know that it's okay and you will persevere. But what right now, this is the things that I did to help me in those situations from what I know. And sometimes you might go up to these people and they might think that they, they don't necessarily want you to talk to them as if there's something wrong with them. Because what it does, it creates frustration where they are in their minds asking themselves, is there something wrong with me? And then somebody else comes and gives them evidence that there might be. And they get, they get mad. Yeah. They get frustrated. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like sometimes I'll go out to people and if someone's stressed, like if my brother's stressed, I will play with them. I'll be like, I like to ask him like, yo, man, dude, there's so many good things that you're doing. What's, what's up? Like, and he, he, sometimes he'll look at me funny and he'll smile and laugh. As I like, what are you talking about? It's been kind of a shitty day, yeah. but like, but like for me, I'll make some jokes. I'll make the environment a little better for him, and then I'll be like, man, like you know, school's coming up. School's like obviously change. You're going back to school in December. Like right now, man, just do the things you really enjoy. Do mm -hmm. the things you want. Like you, if you're gonna worry about eight months from now and make the current time bad, and what people don't realize actually is that over time you. Um, you have to work on yourself to become somebody by that period of time. So if I'm getting my degree, I gotta, I know I gotta become somebody that can, that can own up, that can get a degree. You know, yeah. I have to educate myself. I have to have that confidence. And through that time, like if I'm for six months thinking I'm not gonna get it or this is not gonna happen, 
what am I, is that going to increase my chances of getting it? Probably not. It's going to limit me. So it's like in those moments, the thoughts that I'm having are the things that I'm going to try. What you give energy to is what is going to grow. So that's some piece of advice you could probably give them too. Um, that what you give energy is going to grow. So if I'm giving energy to those feelings, those thoughts, and it can, it depends on the situation, right? Like somebody could be anxious because like, imagine they work at a zoo and like an animal ran out the cage one day and they got scared. Like they got scared for their lives and they don't want to go back to work anymore. Like, that's anxiety, yes, and that's. But now, like, it's kind of like it's a situation where there's a lot of reason to it, and it's like maybe if he sees people who, when those animals come out out of the cage, and they're able to easily and calmly direct them back to the cage, yeah. have things happen. Uh, that's what they do. Actually, there's actually VR um, triggering stuff where uh, people and patients in psychology mm -hmm. they go. Let's say they're afraid of uh, of that situation. Then they'll basically play a VR role in their mind of a situation of somebody doing that exact thing with a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. and so they're repeatedly seeing that. But you, you're lucky that you don't need a VR system for this. You have your imagination. You can actually think of a future outcome of you in control. Mm -hmm. And if you continue thinking about a future outcome of you in control, then you can attract that if that's something that you know is going to be needed for you to do the job that you're going to do. Um, but if I'm thinking that, man, every single day I'm thinking I'm going to get jumped by a, like an animal and I'm really feeling that, no, first of all, like, yeah, we, we, we came, we, we've evolved instinctually, right? People in the, in the, uh, who live outdoors and had to survive, they had to think like that. It was something that, like, if they're not thinking, you would rather be prepared for danger rather than being unprepared, right? So you having those thoughts is preparing you. And so when the time comes, you'll be ready and adept to move and act quickly. But if you were not aware of it at all and it comes and blindsides you, you're in, you're in some bad situation. So um, going from that place, it's kind of like, okay, well, do you still want to work there? Do you want to do these things? And that's where it would go. And, and put your mind in that place of seeing the outcome that you want rather than seeing the outcome you don't want and hope again, it's only working for me too. In some areas it doesn't like I might not where I'm going right now. It's somewhere yeah. I've been, you know, it doesn't work for everyone the same way. Yeah. Um, but in a situation where it's somewhere, something bad has happened, it's conditioning, right? Something yeah. bad happens, see it as a downside, as a, as a bad thing. And you want to refrain from it. If something good happens, you want to go for it. But it all goes down to what is necessary for you to drive right now. And you are a person that is in control. You're in the director's seat, right? Right. So, thank you so much, my Rose, and thank you for all the you know interesting examples that you gave. I think it made it a lot more easier, and I hope it made it easier for our viewers too. Yeah, yeah. I'll just like it. Oh, oh, sorry. Go on. I was gonna wrap it up. You can. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I wanted to thank you guys as well for listening. Um, again, I'm happy to do this. This is something I'm passionate about. And um, I hope in this one hour, there was a lot of stuff that was able to provide value. I know there's many of you in different situations. And uh, it's kind of like in, in those moments, I hope I was able to talk in a way where it involved you. Um, but if there's any way that we can help on this show, I know Afifa is doing a great job. And Rutaba as well. I hope I pronounced it well. Did I <laughs> I, 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 can you tell <laughs> i don't want to I'm okay sorry viewers don't make that mistake that i do. um but yeah so thank you guys again for having me on this and um i look forward to to what's going to come up come about thank you for joining us thank you for having like thanks for joining us i think i learned a lot as well i'm going to take a lot of like what you said into my own day-to-day -day life so um you can join me in a fifa again next week on youtube um, IP boxes in North America and Facebook. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.